So I've managed to amass a pretty good sized collection of offerings from the House of Raja Parfums. And I have, I don't really have one that I don't like, but there's definitely a lot that I like more than others. So I took, looked at the 15 that I do have, whittled them down to my 10 personal favorites. I did rank them in order from least favorite to most favorite. And I wanted to discuss them with you because I get asked about what some of my favorites are all the time. I figured, why not? Let's make a video about it. So stay tuned. Starting with one that I haven't spent a ton of time with, I've only worn two or three times since I got my hands on a bottle. It is Miraculous. It's my friend Andrea's favorite from the house. She gives it an 11 out of 10 in a blind smell and rate video we did on Justin's channel a while back, that being Sweetie Oud. So known to have that patisserie, bakery, baked bread type of smell, I do get a little bit of a candy smell in the top with that baked bread type of smell. I don't know if it's the amorous that's in there that kind of gives me that rock candy type of sweetness. It's very strange what I get from it. Uh, not necessarily those around me get a similar note, but it's got this weird candied sweetness. It doesn't stay for a long time and it's not overpowering and overwhelming. It's just something I kind of pick up sitting in the background that kind of pops off on my skin, even out in the air like the spray I just did. But Performance is stellar as with all of these fragrances. There's no need to even touch on performance because these all perform great. So let's just establish that in the first pick. Uh, this is one that very unisex. It has a little bit of a gourmand feel without being too heavily sweet of a fragrance. The oud here is not too in your face. There is a little bit of a warm wood oud smell in the background. It has almost like a cinnamon baked bread type of smell. In the top, it does start to dry down and get a little bit creamy and smooth, but and, I mean, it's never really not a smooth fragrance. It just gets smoother as it transitions. Um, I can't distinguish any particular notes outside of kind of this baked goods accord that it's known to have. I feel like that was the goal based on the story they told, and I feel like they achieved what they were going for here because it's definitely quite unique. I've never smelled another fragrance that smells like Sweetie Oud. Uh, doesn't lean feminine, doesn't lean masculine, but definitely leans to the more unique and interesting side of things. It smells great and it's a strong, not necessarily strong compliment getter, but it's really, really, really good at starting a conversation because most people have never smelled a fragrance like this. The number 10 spot is Roger Parfum's Sweetie Oud. So even though the new Parfum version is out, which I do enjoy, I do like the brightness and the opening of the Eau de Parfum more. I am talking about the discontinued Oligarch. If you can get your hands on this one and you like a bright citrus green opening, this is the better version. But if you're looking for more density, richer woods, then the Parfum would be the better route to go for you. Uh, I am lucky enough to have both. Uh, the Eau de Parfum, I do lean towards a little bit more. This is actually a glorified stunner for the springtime because there's a lot of green herbaceous feel to this with a lot of bright citrus, uplifting and bright type of opening here. Uh, that's why I prefer the EDP. It's just so bright in the opening, but it's still pretty smooth and refined. This is one that has that luxury appeal, but it's quite casual at the same time. This is a casual approach to a luxury fragrance or a luxury approach to a casual fragrance i guess would be the correct way to say that um, it can dress up very well i do see this as a very business formal forward type of scent this will work great with a nice suit or a, a very well put together oxford and slacks combination maybe nice belt nice wing tips whatever your style is double monk straps whatever have you you get the point it dresses up very well but it's also got the casual laid-back approach to where i think this is quite versatile this is one of the most versatile fragrances from the house and that's one of the things i love about it you'll notice that versatility is kind of a selling point for me when it comes to most fragrances and this video is nothing short of that at the number nine spot one of the most versatile from the house Oligarch Eau de Parfum. Next is one of my favorite cooler weather oriented fragrances from the house. 
I have smelled the Parfum version, and I actually prefer the brightness of the Parfum Cologne a little bit more with Creation E, also known as Enigma. This stuff, it's known as the Dr. Pepper Float, Coke Float type of smell. Cognac, Heliotrope, Benzoin. It all kind of works in conjunction to smell like a dark soda poured over some vanilla ice cream. It really does. The tobacco comes in a little bit as it starts to tone down and dry. It's a smooth, sweet tobacco. This is an extremely inviting, boozy fragrance. It's gorgeous. The cognac and benzoin mix so well together, and it's a powerhouse. This stuff is an attention grabber at its finest, but just way too much in the hot weather. My opinion, of course. I think this is way too much in the warm weather. But damn, does it smell good. A fragrance that's actually synonymous with Chris from Fragmental. Really and truly, I know a lot of people have purchased the, at least samples off of his recommendation. I know Chris had a, had a lot of good things to say about this before I had got a bottle. And uh, he kind of played a role in how I feel about this. I guess technically he influenced me a little bit on this. So shout out to you, Chris. And uh, this is one of not necessarily the safer plays, but I would say as far as sweet, boozy fragrances from the house, this is one of the more mass-pleasing, mass-appealing options. It's very popular for a reason. This is some really, really good stuff, and it's absolutely worth the olfactive experience to get at least a sample or a small decant just so you can experience it and see if it's full bottle worthy because none of these fragrances are cheap. This is all very expensive. This is actually one of the more affordable fragrances in this video in particular, but as far as scent profile, it's a stunner. If you're looking for something a little different along the, the lines of something boozy, sweet tobacco, this is a little, little different as far as your run-of-the-mill boozy, sweet tobaccos, qualities to the nines. It just, it just works. It's really, really good stuff. You guys should try this one. It's one of my favorites for a reason. Creation E Parfum Cologne. Next, when I first got this one, I didn't realize how much I was going to like it. It's a simplistic style, complex note breakdown, but the scent profile is timeless when it comes to masculine citrus aromatics, and the quality is just dialed up so high on a reimagined classic profile in Harrods Parfum Pour Homme. Man, I wear this stuff, shoot, I mean, see the juice level starting to drop. Over the last several months, I've wore this more than any other in this video. Now in the summer, that's a different story, we'll get to that fragrance, but I've wore this more than any other fragrance in this video in the last six months. I really, really dig this stuff. It's not mind-blowing. God, it's so good. It's not mind-blowingly different, but the complexity's there. There's layers to this fragrance. It sticks to your skin and just never goes away, but it doesn't overwhelm. This isn't a super loud fragrance. Granted, I don't spray it super heavy. Five, six sprays usually when I wear it, more than enough. It leaves a nice trail that can captivate. It's got a denseness to the aroma for being a citrus aromatic. There's a medley of citruses, fresh greens. There's some florals here. There's some lighter woods. There's a lot of different things. There's a clean muskiness to it here. There's nothing really animalic or dirty about the fragrance. It's a very clean feel, very clean, refined, professional, luxurious smell. It definitely smells to the nines as far as quality, which most have come to expect from Roger Parfums. I know I have. And like I said, this one's pricey. This one is exclusive to Harrods. This is the men's version marketed directly to the men's, but it's got, like I said, it's got that classic masculine citrus aromatic profile. Think Eau Sauvage, the original. Uh, fragrances like that. While it doesn't smell exactly like that, it's that style of fragrance, just with performance and quality cranked up. Complexity cranked up because there's a ton of notes in these fragrances especially Harrods Parfum but another one not a must have a must smell in my opinion but if you want if you like that style and you just want what I believe to be the top tier of that style you might want to get a decant so you can check this one out for yourself Roger Parfum's Harrod, Harrods Parfum Pour Homme probably my favorite spicy fougere I've ever smelled this is an aromatic fougere at its finest that's centered around at least for me centered around warm, spicy, green herbs. I love this about this fragrance. This fragrance screams, dress up Oxford or better. I don't see this as a t-shirt fragrance with Scandal Parfum Cologne. I love this stuff so much so that I don't even wear it enough. I wore it not long ago. Finally pulled it out and placed it in the rotation because 
I like it so much that I hold it for certain situations and special occasions, which when you get to having a lot of fragrances, that's not the most wise decision because it'll never get worn. And that seems to be what happens with this one. But I really, really, I still smell it floating. I love the way this one smells because I love spicy fragrances. I love herbaceous fougeres that have a nice dense spice to them. This is more warm spice than fresh spice overall. There is some citruses up top to kind of smooth it out and have a light freshness in the background at the top. It's not in the forefront because I get a lot of this basil meets um, bay leaf and rosemary and i'm not even 100 percent sure exactly of what the notes are but i'm trying to give you an idea of the green spicy appeal that i get up top that carries into the dry down with some lovely dense woods there's some florals here there's a little bit of muskiness that's a little bit darker adds a bit of a darker tone to this one but it's not anything that makes it a very dirty fragrance when i say dark it just makes it a much more warm and spicy fragrance but it's not full of peppers and things like that. There's, I don't really get any sweetnesses here. Um, it's classic masculine at its finest. It really is. This is much more on the spicy side of what a fougere is all about. And that's why it's kind of my favorite spicy fougere, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a lovely fragrance that may not be for everyone. It definitely has that more matured masculine appeal, dressy, you know, sports jacket type of thing. Um, not going to be for everyone, but it's not a challenging fragrance by any means. It's just one that speaks to my personal taste very, very well. One of my favorites in my collection overall. It's Roger Part from Scandal, Part from Cologne. Next, this is one of the best citrus fruity dominating openings I've ever smelled. So much so that I left its Parfum Cologne flanker sitting on the shelf. I didn't even put it in this video because if you've got the money to spend, this is the hands down better version. That's Elysium, Parfum Pour Homme. This stuff is incredible, super pricey for what it is. I understand that. I understand why people want to go the routes of alternatives with this one, but it's one of those fragrances that is second to none, in my opinion, when it comes to citrus fruity, mass appealing blue style fragrances that have the quality, the believable authenticity of the notes you're smelling that Elysium Parfum Pour Homme has. I did a full review on this one a while back. I love this stuff. Once it heats up, this will be heavy in the rotation. At the recording of this video, we're at the tail end of winter, about to transition into spring. So can I wear it? Sure but I'm very seasonal. I'm gonna wait to at least having some warm spring weather before I even consider spraying this one currently because I know I'm gonna to wanna to keep going back to it and I want that bright, invigorating, refreshing nature that this fragrance can provide when it's nice and hot outside. It's pricey, don't get me wrong, but it performs, it's dense, it's a massive compliment getter, and like I said, the believability and authenticity of the citrus fruits you're going to smell from this fragrance is second to none. This is an old fact of experience, definitely worth having, more so than most of the fragrances in this video. I think it's that damn good. Raja Parfums Elysium Parfum. Next is one I've only worn a little bit less than a handful of times. Definitely suits the cooler weather, definitely a dress to the nines type of occasion, though it doesn't absolutely have to be completely dressed up. I would say uh, business casual, semi-formal, is where it suits best. It's warm amber. It's got this dense oud wood smell, but it's not too heavy on any one thing. There's some sweetness here. There's a nice warm spice to go with the warm amber. I'm talking about amber oud. One of the most popular fragrances from the house for a reason. You see this color juice? Do not spray your clothes with this. It even comes with a warning in the box. Don't spray your clothes with this. It will stain, but God, is it good. Middle Eastern vibe with a luxurious appeal, definitely. A lot of amber, a lot of oud, a lot of spice, super warm, but there's a nice tone of sweetness. It's a little animalic with the musky nature to it, a little leathery type of feel in the background. Uh, it's hard to pull any specific notes out of it because it's a very complex fragrance, but it has that aura of just luxury. It just screams luxury. Another one very pricey from the house, but it's another olfactive experience worth having. Is it completely original? I haven't really smelled anything exactly like it, but at its core, it's Oud Rose. There's a ton of Oud Roses out there, but 
Not all of them have the level of quality here or the blend that Amber Oud has inside this bottle. It is special. Not one I would recommend running out and blind buying, even if you have the money to spare and it's chump change to you. I still think you should sample this one first because this is an interesting fragrance. And when I say interesting, I don't mean smells bad in any way, shape, or form. It's just you have to really like oud, rose, amber, spice, and an animalic musky leather smell. It's not a really challenging fragrance, but to the average person that's used to wearing designer fragrances from Macy's, this is super challenging and super potent. So that's why I say it's absolutely worthy of getting a sample to see how you're going to feel about it. See how it reacts on your skin. See what type of layers to this fragrance from the top to the heart to the base come out. What pops on your skin? How enjoyable is it? Is it worth that heavy price tag? Because this stuff is special. It is a special fragrance, but one that I only see personally enthusiasts and aficionados really being able to appreciate. My opinion, of course, but that's how I view it. And it's one of the best out there. That's why it's so high in the list. It's Roger Parfums, Amber Oud. Speaking of immensely complex, as far as fresh fragrances are concerned, this is one of the most complex fragrances I've ever put my nose on, and it's so oddly attractive. It's got a dirty, animalic, musky tone to it, and I mean dirty, musky smell almost bordering BO as strange as that sounds in the dry down and it's oddly attractive and intoxicating. It's bright orange peel smell with this warm rum. It's got some woods and some herbs while it's still very fresh, but very warm at the same time without a ton of spice. It's, it's a strange one to describe. It really is with Burlington 1819 hot damn. Is this stuff good? Man, another one that I believe everybody, look, it's expensive to get decants of these things. I understand. Everybody needs to try this. Some people are going to think, are going to think it's terrible. I understand that because it's very complex and it's very, it's very original. This is an original fragrance. I have never smelled anything close to Burlington 1819 because it, when you look at the note breakdown, you think you're coming into an extremely fresh fragrance. This just got a little bit of rum going for it. When what you get is an extremely warm fragrance, and I mean very warm, like warming on the skin, but still manages to maintain bright, fresh appeal at the top. And even going into the heart, the herbs and the greens start to come in more, but that rum never seems to want to shake off. It never really wants to fade. Then this musky, woody tone, and I mean a darker, dirtier, more animalic musk, starts to come in more and more and more as those citrus fresh notes start to fade away. It sticks to the skin. It's not an overwhelming projection. If you spray it heavy, it'll be a lot. It will be. But if you're moderate with the sprays, you're mindful of your setting, it won't be too much. It's only heavy in like the first hour. Then it sits pretty close to the skin, but it stays very consistent on the skin and leaves a dense trail. This is a conversation starter that can be worn in the summer. For as warm as I say it is, it can be worn in the summer, yet it's got enough going that you can cut through the cold with this stuff. It's just not going to be an overwhelming projection. This is one of the most interesting fragrances I have ever smelled in my life. I love this stuff. That's why it managed to make the top three. The top two are my favorites because I wear them the most. This, if it was strictly on the appeal to me, the intrigue, this would be number one, but I can't overshadow what I reach for the most. That's why this is number three instead of number one, just to give you some insight. So get your nose on this one. If any of that sounds good, Roger Parfums, Burlington 1819. What I deem the two most versatile, enjoyable fragrances I have from the house, starting at number two, is Danger Parfum Cologne. Now, I do think Danger Parfum smells better. I just don't own it. It's more dense. Whereas this, I can pull this off in the summer a lot better. So technically, I would still wear this more even if I had a bottle of Danger Parfum. This is another Another side of Aromatic Fougere, where it shares a lot of similarities in scent profile and in note breakdown to Scandal Parfum Cologne, this is more centered around freshness, citrus, and florals versus the dense, warm, and spice side of an Aromatic Fougere. This stuff is beautiful. This is highly wearable. This has a really attractive quality to the scent profile. My wife loves the way this one smells. 
it dresses up, it dresses down. You can do it all with this. This is a signature scent at its finest, in my opinion. That's why I wear it the most. It can do everything. Well, second most. There's one I do wear a little bit more. Um, this stuff is just so good. In the time I've had it, there's never a bad time to wear it. There's never a bad season. There's never a bad attire. It smells of quality. It smells of simplicity for the type of scent, but very complex once you dive into the aroma. You'll get different things. You'll find the depth as you start to smell it. It's like your nose is traveling through the aroma, finding and picking up different things. It's a beautiful fragrance. It really is. Honestly, if I was to recommend just one to get because of the versatility of it and everything else that I just said that comes with it, I would say Danger Parfum Cologne is probably the safest bet. From the house as a whole, is it the freshest? No. Is it the most complex and interesting? No. It's the one that does it all better than the rest in my opinion. This is a stunning fragrance. And it grew on me more and more and more over time because when I did the initial review, I only gave it a seven overall a couple of years ago when I first got it. And since then, it has become one of my favorite, most worn fragrances in my collection, especially when it comes to Fougeres because it literally is good at everything I need a fragrance to be good at. So, hope that helps. That's why it's number two for me, Danger Parfum Cologne. Number one on my list may not be a surprise to a lot of you, especially if you've made it this far in the video. You probably figured out what number one's gonna be. It's the fragrance I wore the most in the summer of 2021 at the recording of this. It is the first week of March, 2022. It will be one of my most worn fragrances in the summer again, because I'll be damned if it isn't just perfectly built for my taste, my the, the climate that I deal with here in Colorado Springs for the summer, and just the vibe of the overall apparel choices I make during the summer. Oceania is the one. I love this stuff. It looks like it's gonna be an aquatic fragrance based on its presentation. The name screams aquatic. The note breakdown does not. That continues to intrigue me how Raja Dove was able to pull off this aquatic feel without watery notes, sea notes, ozonic notes, stuff like that. There's a beautiful amalgamation of bright, fresh citrus. I mean, super airy. This is a very aldehydic type of brightness. And then you go into this slightly soapy, lightly powdery iris violet combo in the heart that adds to the aquatic feel because it's more soapy floral than it is waxy, makeup-y, earthy. There's no petroleum vibe from the, the violet. You don't get any of that. It's this nice, fresh, bright, soapy floral tone that adds a light powdery nature that gives a little bit of refinement to the scent profile to take a laid back, not so serious profile and add some elegance and class to it. So this is one that if you like your linen button ups, like I'm, I'm wearing one right now, you like this kind of stuff in the summer on vacation, this goes well with it. A nice thin white Oxford with the sleeves rolled up, a couple buttons down, this rolls with it. This is great for it. Golf shirts, this works great if you're the type that wears a lot of golf shirts in the heat. Okay, there's a little bit going on that's more than casual, but it's just as casual as you need it to be. It'll surprise you with the way this one performs. It leaves a trail, it'll pop up hours and hours and hours into the wearing to remind you it's still there and it's still coming off well enough on your skin, but this is not a heavy projector ever at any given point, unless you bathe in it in the beginning, which I wouldn't recommend doing, it's expensive. Why bathe in it? It sticks to the skin, eight, nine, 10 hours in, it's still there. It's not a faint skin scent on my skin. The longevity is there, but this is a more intimate level fragrance. It's more enjoyable for you and close encounter situations, passers-by. So it's built basically for when you heat up, that's when it's going to give you that projection. If you're indoors in a climate controlled situation, it's not going to overwhelm anyone. It's not going to be too much. You need your skin to heat up for this one to start pumping off the skin. This is brilliantly done. I love this fragrance. I love how it wears. It's not the most complex and interesting fragrance in this video. It's probably the least complex and interesting fragrance in this video, though it does have a lot of that going for it. Comparatively, it's probably the least, but it's also the one I enjoy wearing the most. I've sprayed this bottle more than any of the rest, especially in summer of 2021. I've had it for a short time. I got it right before the summer and I kept going back to it. 
This stuff is fantastic. It had some hype for a while and it's fully deserved in my opinion because technically it's my number one favorite Roger Barfums fragrance in my collection. Again, that's Oceania. Well, that is my ranked order of my 10 favorite fragrances from Roger Parfums. Do I have all of them? No, there's tons that I don't have. Do I have some of the more expensive ones? Sure, Diaghilev didn't make the video. That may have surprised some of you because that's one that I hold in such high regard for certain situations, very, very specific situations. I just don't wear it enough to consider it one of my favorites. I just can't. I don't wear it enough. I've worn it two times and it's very specific. These I reach for, I wear casually, I wear to go to dinner, I do different things like that. These are the ones I wear. The more you wear them, the more likely they are your favorites because if you don't really enjoy them the most, you're not gonna keep going back to them. So of the 15 I have, these are the 10 I wear the most. And until next time, do me a real quick favor, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What are some of your favorites? Are you surprised by the order here? Are you surprised to see some of these or certain ones maybe omitted from the list? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down in the comments below. Until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later because these are something special. They just are. Have a good one, guys.